Hey guys, welcome back to some more Cold Hearts. Um, in the last episode, we got stripped naked by a washing machine. That's right, you you heard that right. You don't adjust your television set. You heard that correctly. <laughs> Let's go on to the next part. Apparently, I'm going to sleep now. Another night passed. Oh, uh, not now. Not during this headache. I actually have a little headache in real life. I should probably stop playing video games. My phone sounds way louder than it usually does. Did it develop a personality too and wants to make me suffer now? I wouldn't be surprised. Hello? Good morning. Today's the day of delivery. This is an automatic reminder. A courier will visit you, your chosen destination, in one hour. A oh, snap, I totally forgot. My new equipment will be delivered today to my store, and I have to be there to sign the papers. Why today of all days? Hey, he hello? Can I please change the destination to my home address? It's important. I... No, you cannot. By the way, this is an automatic reminder. We do not answer questions. We deliver. Have a good day. Damn it! Seems like I have to go to work today. I don't even want to imagine the bureaucratic chaos I would have to go through to get my appliances back if I didn't sign those papers today. Why, oh why? Yay, responsibilities! It wouldn't come as a surprise if I said I didn't like my job. Of course, no one ever forced me into doing it, but I've grown up enough to know that I should be thankful to my father and accept this heritage. I owe everything to him, and even though he's gone now, I still feel, I still feel, I still feel like I shouldn't let him down. The store is just a few blocks away from my house, and on sunny days, I walk there to calm down and relax. Well, I mostly do that when my nightmares get out of my bed early. Get out, get me out of bed early. Although last night was an exception, I actually overslept. So I grab my bike and get cycling. Early morning rituals, open the blinds, dust down the equipment, sweep the floor. It's not a huge retail store, although the customer customer's area is just a part of the building. The other side is a huge storeroom with my father's workshop where we keep used and broken appliances. Fortunately, father taught me how to make minor repairs of household equipment so I can always earn extra money by reselling some junk people leave here. Fascinating, right? Well, there is one thing that makes me a little more cheerful, but, uh, cheerful about coming here, and by thing, I mean person. Where... That sounded wrong. But yeah, there was a certain girl in the neighborhood that left her fridge with me. It had broken down, she couldn't afford a new one. She was really nice to me when we spoke, and it's pretty rare for a customer in a boring store like this to actually smile. Damn, her smile. She's a little bit tomboyish, always wearing a baseball cap with messy hair underneath, and damn, that smile of hers. Ooh. I haven't finished the repairs on her fridge yet, but I like to imagine her coming here for small talk. Small talk about refrigerators and washing machines. Eh, what else can I hope for? I open the front door and immediately get slapped by a newspaper. Thrown by the paper boy. Oh dear. It's not going well, is it? Thanks. I sigh and peel the... Oh, that's her! And peel the paper from her face. Uh, from my face. I peek at the cover and suddenly my heart skips a beat. So what does it say, what does this say here? Have you seen this girl? A uh, 21-year-old woman was missing. Yuki Honda disappeared on her way to work last Friday morning. She was last seen by her friend in the region of Tonkatsu Bentu, near the local high school, heading towards her workplace at Serba HQ. Uh, she was wearing a blue baseball cap, plain white t-shirt, and blue jeans. If you have any information about the woman, please contact the police at this phone number. It's her. The baseball cap girl. 21-year-old missing. Uh, well, I've just read all this. Um, <laughs> I have literally just read all of this. So I'm going to have to skip through this. What? What? She's missing? She was last seen near my store, so whatever happened to her it must have happened in my neighborhood. But how? Nothing really happens here. We're probably the safest district in the city. I feel goosebumps all over my body. I didn't even know her name. What do you do now? Yuki. Oh dear, Yuki. Oh, that's terrible. I guiltily can't help but feel a little excited. Nothing ever happens around here. Hell, maybe I can ask around, talk to some of my customers, and help find her? I can already imagine next week's front page. Shop owner saves baseball cap girl. She also accepts his proposal. Me shaking hands with the mayor. Boom! Why did I make that boom noise? What? I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I just said boom for no reason. Uh, it's a good thing I don't have a weak heart. I almost jumped out of my chest. 
Source of the sudden noise and find the delivery, bra delivery man bringing the new equipment. Seems very confident in the packaging material, judging how carelessly he hauls the packages from his truck. Hey, it's fragile. Please don't. Sign here. I scowl at him angrily, but he barely even reacts. Apparently more interested in his fern than me. I sigh, <sighs> sign everything, and ignore him while carefully moving the heavy boxes inside. Alright, what do we have here? Two new microwaves, a used freezer, blender, a few compact mini fridges, last year's models. I start unpacking and making sure that e that damn delivery driver didn't cause any real damage to the appliances. I can't help but notice the delicious smell. Something resembling strawberries and cherries and... Pepperoni? Weird. Did he leave me a strawberry, cherry and pepperoni pizza? Mmm, my favourite. Oh, I'm so hungry now that I think about it. Apparently last night's chocolate catastrophe wasn't enough. I need to call a takeout before- Hello there. Oh, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> if you get that, that reference then, you're fantastic and I love you. Another heart attack! I can't have more than two per hour. Yeah, typically you don't want to have more than two heart attacks per hour. Just one per hour is pretty standard. My first reaction is to frantically look through all the new appliances, searching for the source of my latest mental breakdown. It's probably one of those damn mini fridges. Oh, I swear if, it's, if one of you starts talking to me, here, Dumbo behind you. Um, ah, I didn't mean to press save, but I'll do that, I guess. Um, here, Dumbo behind you. I turn around and my jaw drops. Oh, it's a girl. A new customer. Probably. My thoughts drift away to Yuki immediately to try some comparison, but I don't seem to remember her face anymore. This girl is radiant. Her perfume reminds me of something really, really tasty and... Oh man, she looks even more delicious. Oh my god, am I like a cannibal? I use all my strength to close my mouth, then even more to try and start a conversation. What, what can I help you with? My voice sounds so high-pitched and weak she may think I'm a hamster. Yep, here we go, she grins at me like I've just told a good jerk. Ah, uh, nothing really, just passing by. Wanted to check all the cute junk you have around here, don't mind me. She casually jumps away. Oh my god, she does like a backflip away and sits on one of my precious Mecha Helper 3000 washing machines, kicking it with her sneakers as she waves her legs. She looks around, focusing on each and every piece of equipment I have in my store. She leans towards the washing machine right next to her and proceeds to scratch one of the manufacturer's stickers. Still, I keep pressing that. Still looking around curiously. I want to stop her from destroying my belongings, but uh, her shorts are cropped so high. I... So this is all you have here, Dumbo? Your little paradise of kitchen junk? She leers at me, still scratching with her long, polished nails. What a meanie! No, no, it's not. I have a workshop here too, where I repair everything that others don't care for. I try to make it seem like very- I try to make this seem very important. Honorable stuff to do. But she doesn't even seem to be paying attention. Suddenly, she jumps off and comes closer to me, swinging her lovely hips as she approaches. Her smell overwhelms me. I can't- so, you have more of this junk in the back, huh? Any special backroom junk for your beloved clientele? Oh my god, she wants me. I go very hard. Wait a minute! She's gonna be a fridge, isn't she? It's gonna turn out that she's a fridge. I can, I can, I can see this coming from a mile away. I go very, very loud. Oh dear, don't screw this up. Try my best to learn my voice as much as I can. It depends on what kind of junk are you interested in. That was my manly voice that he puts on. I tried to wink, but all my face can do right now is something resembling a nervous tick. The flirty expression wa washes off her face. Now she just looks like she pities me. No, please no. Never mind, I guess. I was just passing by. Goodbye then. Oh god. She rushes outside and disappears out of my sight before I even realize what happened. I breathe heavily for a few seconds and run towards my washing machines, checking the stickers. Huh. She was scratching out for some time, yet yeah, I can't see any damage. Good then, at least my equipment is saved. Can't say the same about my dignity. Fortunately, there were no other unexpected events throughout my work day. I tend to value not- Stop pressing that button, Steve! To value normality more and more these days. Am I getting older or what? I close the shop, count the money and clean up the place a little bit. And the sun starts to set as a final sign that I should probably go home now, but I rarely do that at this hour. Home means loneliness and nothing to occupy myself with. When my father passed away, here we go again. When my father passed away. Every time. I spent whole nights in the workshop here, trying to focus on repairing appliances instead of thinking about how much my life sucked. The workshop is a special place to me, but not in a positive way. It's a place to spend time when I feel lost and depressed. 
The only way to keep myself sane and refocus my thoughts on something productive. My little personal purgatory. I can see a fridge right there. This is not looking good. I open the workshop door and a cloud of dust hits my lungs, causing a bad cough. Damn, I should do something about the mess in here. I look around. Desk with an old PC, tons of repair tools obstructing its keyboard. Coffee mug with a cloud of mold popping out of it. Boxes full of forgotten documents. The huge room is cluttered with old fridges, washing machines and microwaves. Some of them totally ruined, others covered with blankets, resembling old, sick people quietly accepting their fate. Wait, am I personifying items again? Brian, please remind me not to do that. Smiling, I admit to myself that this company is far better than any other I've ever met today. At least they don't talk. Maybe it's because they're mad at me for leaving them here. Do they feel offended? Um, well, you'll probably still find somewhere to flirt with them. Well, let it be this way. I enjoy the silence quite a bit. I stop smiling when my eyes focus on a fridge. Here we go. On the other side of the room, the blanket covering its, covering it has holes. Okay. Letting dust fall in and settle on its top. I throw it to the side, cov uh, coughing again. Uh, the, the blanket covering it, it has holes. Okay. This fridge belongs, belongs to the baseball cap girl. To Yuki. I wonder where she is and if she'll ever come back for her fridge. Even if she doesn't. Damn. Why do I even think about it that way? Wait. I think the fridge is Yuki, and we've actually kidnapped her and kept her in here. I still feel obliged to repair it. It's not in perfect condition, but I'm sure I can do something with it. Let me just open it and see. Ugh, it worked, budge. I know I've opened it before. What's happened since then? Have I murdered her and put her in the fridge? Maybe it's the moisture in this place. I pick up some tools and try to open it with a little bit of force, but it remains tightly shut. I don't want to cause any damage, so I give up. Well, let's start the repair from the back then. Oh, my phone's ringtone is so loud. I check my pockets in a panic. Why can't I speak today? Finally, grab the smartphone and look at its display. Oh, not him. Not now. Oh. Masato Ibiki. Former business partner of my father, and now yet another pain in the ass I have to deal with. He doesn't just earn the land this store stands on, but also invests money in it. Offer a small cut of the profits. So he's a landlord. Considering the current economy and my credit rating, this guy's my only hope. A relationship worth cultivating, or rather one I'm forced to cultivate. I answer the call hesitantly. Why, hello there. What a pleasant surprise. You actually picked up your phone. A surprise? Surprise? I always answer your calls, you bastard. <laughs> Ugh, I can't say that out loud. I have to behave. Expecting me to get angry? You won't get it. Good evening, Mr. Abiki. How can I help you? Well, I thought you'd know. It appears to me like you have a business plan for the quarter due to... Tomorrow? Yes, it's done. It's done already, actually. I can deliver it any time. Splendid. All right, so how about you come over tonight in, let's say, two hours? I'll order some dinner and then we can look at this. Then we can look at this plan of yours. My God. Greasy condescending son of a... Okay, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> Mr. Abiki, I'll be there right on the dot. Let's hope so. Hope to see you soon, then. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. In and out. Keep cool, calm, and collected. Let's hope, sir, huh? You should hope I'm not taking my plan and shove it up your ass. Hee hee hee. Wait. What? Is there someone in the store? I thought I locked up before visiting the workshop. I look around. No one's there. Oh, well. I'm hearing enough strange things these days. Let's pretend this was just an appliance hacking up another patient for the workshop. But that'll have to wait. Now I've got to make sure that I actually do have a business plan for tonight. Time to get to work. Time passes. Whew. That was exhausting, but I'm done. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. In fact, this was a perfect opportunity to use logic and reason along with my imagination for something really productive. It was fun. Damn, am I growing up? Anyway... I know Abiki doesn't really take me seriously at all, but he'll have a hard time disagreeing with my plan. It will really improve the store's bottom line. I think this will be a successful evening. Damn it. If I manage to get there on time, shh, I've got to hurry. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up there for today's episode. We're going to put the save right there. Um, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Cold Hearts, please let me know with a like and a subscribe and a comment. Thank you so much for all the support. This has been Steve. That's been Cold Hearts. Checkpoint complete.